Hi folks, I'm Dr. Bill Dines and I am here to welcome you to our uh, 2016 Shakespeare sem semester. I hope you're looking forward to this class. I know I am. Uh, I've this, We'll be looking at some of the most exciting and fascinating plays ever written, in, in my opinion at least, and uh, I'm excited by the kind of exploration and controversy that we'll be indulging in over the course of our time together. Uh, I should let you know, as you're probably already aware, the online ACE site that we have for this class is linked for bureaucratic reasons to my undergraduate class that meets face-to-face -face on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. Uh, I think that will be something that won't be a challenge for us for very long, but it will create confusion from time to time. At any point when you're not clear about what's expected of you, you're shaky on what's what the undergraduates are doing versus what the graduate students are doing, shoot me an email, give me a phone call, and we'll get it cleared up. Uh, I expect confusion. I'm not too worried about it, but I want you to know that we can get that solved. Um, I will try to post these little video uh, introductions once a week uh, to augment what I post on the announcements page. This gives me a chance to talk a little more informally about what we're doing and gives you the opportunity to enjoy looking at me. Uh, if it turns out that these video updates are not terribly useful, I won't bother doing them, but I thought if nothing else, the undergraduate students have to look at me, you might as well get that opportunity as well. Uh, we begin our semester with, frankly, one of my all-time favorite plays, the comedy A Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, I think of it as Shakespeare's first real great success. He'd already been writing and, and performing a number of plays that had started his reputation going. And of course, uh, if you've already read plays like Romeo and Juliet or Taming of the Shrew, you know that he was already pretty good. Uh, but A Midsummer Night's Dream is special, and uh, it allows us to start talking about some of the themes and ideas that Shakespeare will be fascinated by really throughout his career. It's probably worth adding, too, that he was almost certainly working on A Midsummer Night's Dream at about the same time he was writing Romeo and Juliet. Scholars are a little divided as to just how closely those two plays are paired, but if you're familiar with Romeo and Juliet, and I suspect you are, as you're reading A Midsummer Night's Dream, you might be thinking about that play in the back of your head, and uh, especially when we get to Act 5, the parallels and parodies uh, will be very, very interesting to talk about. Uh, in terms of scheduling and how the conversations about the plays will be organized, uh, again, I tried to lay this all out in the syllabus, and we'll develop a rhythm for the semester that I suspect you'll get used to pretty quickly. Uh, again, we're kind of linked to the undergraduate schedule, so I'm asking that you uh, you can read the play at any pace or, uh, that you want, but my undergraduate class is broken. We break the play up into two sections. So I'll ask you to have read the first two acts and take the online quiz by Wednesday, August 31st at noon. Uh, so the quiz will be available on Monday. Please take it before noon on Wednesday. And then the quiz over the rest of the play, Acts 3 through 5, will be available after noon on Wednesday. And I'll ask you to complete that before noon on Friday. Once you've taken the quiz, please do go to the discussion forums. I'm asking that you post questions, comments, ideas, things that you want to talk about there. Uh, please, uh, at least until we figure each other out, uh, well, after you've read the first two acts, no spoilers. If you're the sort who's already gone ahead and finished the entire play, uh, assume that other folks in the class have not, and so focus that those comments that you want to make on Acts 1 and 2 until everybody has had a chance to read the entire play. The quizzes are really designed to do two things. They're designed, number one, to keep you on track with the reading, because it is, I know how easy it is to fall behind. Uh, so the quizzes are there just to kind of keep you going. But they're also there, I hope, to spark some conversation. 
uh, we might not, we certainly won't always agree on interpretations and uh, ideas in the plays. And so if I have a question on the quiz that you get wrong and you think your answer is correct, that's a place for us to start talking. You might be able to convince me that I'm wrong and you're right. Doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Uh, so use the quizzes as a way of kind of focusing attention, which is not to say that if there's an idea that's coming up in the play that's not in the quiz that you can't talk about it, of course not. Uh, go ahead and post those ideas as well. But the quizzes will let you know where I'm interested and what kinds of things I'm hoping to talk about, uh, and, and we can go from there. So the quiz over Act 1 and 2 by Wednesday the 31st, quiz over Acts 3 through 5 by Friday. Oh, the other thing I should say, you'll see the quizzes. Uh, Ten questions, usually multiple choice. Occasionally I'll link to a YouTube clip and ask you to talk a little bit about a performance piece, uh, but generally most of the quizzes will be that kind of very short ten question multiple choice structure. Uh, I think that's enough to get us started. Uh, if you haven't read A Midsummer Night's Dream, I think you're absolutely going to love it. Uh, and if you don't, hey, that's something else for us to talk about. I'm looking forward to our conversations.